Family Theater presents Gene Ruth, Dan O'Herlihy, and Virginia Gregg. The Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Dan O'Herlihy and Virginia Gregg in Lancelot of the Lake to introduce the drama, your hostess, Jean Root. Thank you, Jean Baker. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. The greatest of writers and most lyrical of poets have sung the praises of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. But the one knight who completely won the heart of the world was Sir Launcelot of the Lake. Here is a man that you and I can understand. And because we understand him, we love him. So it is with pride and with pleasure that we present Dan O'Herlihy in the title role and Virginia Gregg as Elaine in Family Theater's Sir Launcelot of the Lake. Dagonet the Fool, jester in King Arthur's court. Yes, a jester, but one who is perhaps best qualified to tell the story of Sir Lancelot of the Lake. Sir Lancelot, who because of his strange beginnings loved the world of reality the more, yet never was quite one with it. For always in his ears rang the echoing words of the Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake, who said, Lancelot. Forget not that thou art the son of a king, as noble as any who walk the human world. Be vigilant, therefore, that thy beauty of soul be as great as thy beauty of face. Prove thy worthiness of knighthood by deeds, not words, and complete whatever task or duty to which thou hast set thy hand with great heart. And, saying thus, the Lady of the Lake placed an enchanted ring in Lancelot's finger, with a stone now blue, now green, now amethyst, changeful as the lake water, that would overcome all evil sorcery. And Lancelot left the lake and journeyed to Camelot to take the vows of the knights of the table round before King Arthur. Before King Arthur at Camelot. I made them lay their hands in mine and swear to reverence the king as if he were their conscience, and their conscience as their king, to break the heathen and uphold the Christ, to ride abroad redressing human wrongs, to speak no slander, no, nor listen to it, to honor their own words as if they're gods. Then, in the boyhood of the year, Sir Launcelot and Queen Guinevere rode through the coverts of the deer, with blissful treble ringing clear. She seemed a part of joyous spring, a gown of green silk she wore, buckled with golden clasps before. A light green tuft of plumes she bore, closed in a golden ring. Oh, Launcelot, when I ride with you, I forget to be a queen, and I'm a girl in bed. Be you girl or be you queen, the fairest woman in the realm is Guinevere. Does knightly chivalry form such words? Or true emotion? Perhaps you know that best, my queen. Tell it me. Knightly chivalry is the, the truest emotion. To have taken the vows before Arthur, to be a knight of the table round, to forever be questing for the Holy Grail, 
That is heaven on this fair earth. It was a blessed day that brought thee from the lake to Camelot. And my world, Lancelot. Without thee, I should have been a sorry knight. <laughs> remember how in eager haste I dropped my sword? Yes. <laughs> well, I remember. You left it in your train and gave it to me when I had need of it. Else Lancelot would have indeed been shamed before he had even begun. And for my deed, thou promised on that day to forever be my knight. Right or wrong? Guinevere, I... <laughs> How serious we are. You seldom laugh, Lancelot. Smile, yea, but laughter, rarely. If I be grave, it's because of all the wonder of this world of man. Is it so different from that fey land beneath the lake? Not too far astray, with trees and crystal springs and wondrous flowers. And yet, I sometimes walk as though a dream, wondering which is reality and which... The vision. Wouldst thou taste reality? We'd best return to Camelot. Tis safer there for thee and me. <laughs> You here, brother? I would have words with you, Lancelot. Most welcome, then. Rest yourself, Hector. I'll open a flagon of ruby wine. I wish no wine. You're not yourself. What pains thee? I saw you ride in with the queen just now. Yeah. The happy winds and warming sun of spring called us this morning. And that is all that called? What mean you? Others saw your return. Sir Mordred looked and smiled. Dagonet the fool. And for all I know, the king himself may have looked upon you two, riding in all flushed and laughing like lovers. Hector, you go too far. And I but follow in my brother's footsteps. Art thou so blind and deafened by thy passion that you think Arthur in the court is unseeing, unhearing? All Camelot is whispering. Thy dallying has smirched the table round, threatens even the quest of the Holy Grail. Were you not my brother, Lancelot? A companion at arms, I would have thy blood for that. I will meet thee within the hour on the field of honor. The field of... Honor you, Sir Lancelot? You say Lancelot dishonors his knightly vows. Shames Camelot. Nay, the boot is on the other foot. The court dishonors Lancelot. I will end these fetid whispers in the wind and disavow my name. Lace leather o'er my shield and ride abroad to cleaner climate. Lancelot, you cannot leave Camelot. Can I not so? Then look in vain for me tonight. The deed is done, Sir Hector. Fare thee well. Brother! Thus, Sir Lancelot rode Aaron from the walls of Camelot, and never a word or farewell look was given to his king or queen. Uncaring rode this peerless knight into the deeps of the woods, yet something within must have led him truly, for at last he came upon a chapel well loved by all the knights of the table round, for there dwelt the hermit of the forest, friend to all. Sir Lancelot, is it truly thee come to join me at Vespers? I, I did not know I would come here, good hermit. Did not know? Thou art always welcome to pass the night in my abode when thou ridest errant for adventure. I... I cannot stay the night, hermit. I must ride on to... to I know not where. Ah, tis not far duty calling thee, but an inner urge driving thee. Yea. And tis not the quest for the grail. Not holy fire burns in your eyes, but flames of another kind. They have besw besmirched my name, mine honor in Camelot. From this day forth I take another name. Sir Lancelot is done. Oh, my son, my son. What mistaken passions have brought thee to thy knees? Peace, Lancelot. Thy life is far from done. Perhaps is just beginning. What mean you? Thou hast fought many a gallant battle, Sir Knight, and won. But the sublimation of the soul in the service of others wins the greatest prize, my son. The rocky path leads ever upward. And by toiling thy best, forgetting thyself for others, perhaps at the end you may see shining... The Holy Grail? This has been a beginning for thee, Lancelot. Perhaps thou mayst find the end, the answer, here as well. I shall return. I know not when and how, but I shall return.
Sir Lancelot rode all that night, but with more hope than when he had quit Camelot. And toward noontide of the next day, the town of Corbin rose in the distance, beautiful, yet draped with an atmosphere of dread. As he emerged from a forest overlooking Corbin, his horse startled a young maid who sat by the bank of a stream. Fair oh. maiden, be not alarmed. Good sir knight, you frightened me. Oh, pray tarry. I will do thee no harm. I... I believe thee. How is it that so lovely a maid is alone in these woods? Who art thou? I'm Elaine. And I'm not alone, sir knight. My nurse and a page boy will soon approach. Who art thou? Call me Chevalier de Malfay. The knight who transgressed. Oh, no. Not thee. I ride errant to serve those in distress in whatever adventure may fall across my path. Then come not to Corbin. Thy death awaits thee in that city of fear. Death has awaited me in many places, child. But what dread fear rests upon fair Corbin? A curse was placed upon our town. A hideous dragon lurks under a magic stone. And every year... A Corbin maiden is sacrificed to him. By heaven! I had not thought to find such savagery in so fair a place. Lady Elaine, I will seek him now and rid Corbin forever of his presence. Oh, if you but could, Sir Knight. If you could destroy such wicked sorcery, you would indeed be an answer from heaven. But, pray, risk not thy life. Save thy fears for the Elaine. dragon, my lady. For I will forthwith do battle. Farewell, Farewell sweet child. Farewell, Lady Elaine. God speed, Sir Malfoy. God keep thee safe, Sir Malfoy. Elaine, oh, Lily Maid, I feared for thee to wander off like that. What would the king thy father say? Thee might have lost thyself. I am lost, Dame Bryson. What dost thou say? Oh, remember me this. His every feature. His one smile caught and held me fast. My love from Camelot has come. Thus, Sir Lancelot rode to Corbin. Approaching the mystic slab of stone with great purpose, the town folk gathered round. Behold, the knight approaches the great stone that houses the dragon. He lays aside his sword and shield. The curse of Corbin may be powerful, but my ring from the lake is more powerful. And I will move this stone. No, the stone moves. Who is this knight who holds such magic? Behold, the dragon crawls from his lair. Follow me, Corbin. Evil sorcery. Poisonous death. Daring cause. But I will destroy thee. The dragon has him in its grip. Nay, all wickedness. My sword has found the soft belly of the beast. Die, evil presence. The curse of Corbin is ended. Sir Knight, thou hast awakened. Yea, good dame. Pray, pray tell, where may I be? Safe in the castle of good King Pellis, Sir Knight. To rest until thy wound is healed, Sir Malfe. Lady Elaine, then... Then thou art no dream. Thy prowess, courage, and great accomplishment has won thee honor. My father, King Pelles, joins me in commending thee. Sir, I... I... Nay, do not try to rise, Sir Knight. What thanks may we bring you for freeing our fair land from the curse? No thanks to me, my lord. But give thanks to God, whose tool and instrument I was in the undertaking. Pray tell us thy true name, Chevalier, that we may thank thee equally true. I... Forgive me if I cannot say, my king... There is a, a reason for my blank shield. As Chevalier de Malfay, ye shall be known in this court, Sir Knight, until it please you to assume your proper name and title. And 
Another goblet of wine, Guinevere, my queen? I promise you no, Arthur. No wine, amber, or ruby could warm my heart this weeping day. I have noticed thy inquietude since Lancelot left our court. I, I do not mean to disturb thee, sire, when weighty matters of the realm rest on thy shoulders. My restlessness? Merely a woman's mood, methinks. I think not. Guinevere. Yea, my lord. Dost thou love me? Why, Arthur, am I not thy queen? A king cannot command love, nor can a queen give it unless... Guinevere, when the Roman left us and their law relaxed its hold on us, I was first of all the kings who drew the knighthood errant of this realm and all the realms together under me, their head, in that fair order of my table round. Yes, my lord. Thou art the noblest of the kings, thy knights the worthiest. Knowest why I did all this? Why... The very words have said it, Lord, for chivalry. That very time that will be known and famed forever as King Arthur and his table round. All this I did for thee. You love me that much, Arthur? Surely thou knowest how deeply I love thee, Guinevere. I do know, my king. Canst not forget the king for once and look upon the man? Arthur, what can I say? Forgive me, my sweet. Uh, the loss of Lancelot has worn on me without my knowledge. Suppose... Suppose we plan a tournament to lift our spirits. A tournament? Our Lady's Day of Assumption draws nigh. It shall be then. <laughs> In the dust of battle, the shattering of lance and sword. It will lift our hearts, my queen, and Camelot will live again. I shall send word throughout the land, east, west, north and south. Come to the tournament in Camelot. Murphy. Yea, my lady Elaine. Dost thou love these lilies as much as I? Lilies? Oh. oh. Why, yea, yea, thou art very like them, child. So white and gold. Elaine the fair. Elaine the lily maid. Thou art not in my lily world. Thy thoughts were far away. Nay. As far as Camelot. You read me too well. I wist what my heart whispers. Elaine, Elaine. Could I but impart the smallest bit of that joy which thy presence here has brought me, sire? But... Weaving alone in my tower. That was my life, Sir Knight. Before you came. Child, child, you know me not at all. I know that thou art good and true. That thy smile, the dream in thy eyes, could lead me to any corner of the world. Still not enough of knowing. What can I say? In what language may I speak to thee? I love thee. I love thee. Elaine, Elaine. Too long in Corbin have I tarried. Sir Malfi! Sir Malfi! What now? Sir Malfi! Father, what news? Great news, my child. A tournament in Camelot. Camelot? The word just came by herald from King Arthur. My court shall attend. My son, Sir Lavaine, and thee, Sir Malfi. What worthy a knight could I find to do me honor? Myself? But King Pelles... The conqueror of the curse of Corbin must win the prize at Camelot. But, but I tell you... Your eyes were turned toward Camelot. Thou dost not understand, Elaine. If I were recognized... Then there is shame to your true name. We have loved thee all these months, Sir Knight. As though our own son, I would not send thee back to infamy. Nay, King Pelles, tis not because of shame. What, then? I shall ride to Camelot with thy court, sire. <laughs> oh, what gay laughter! What a mad, joyous thing! What a warm and wondrous day for tournament in Camelot! 
Look there, my lords and ladies. The green meadow that is to be the battlefield is carpeted with humanity. Silks and satins, flashing jewels, sheen of armor, plumes in the breeze, people of all degrees, knights and dames, esquires, burghers, yeomen and tradesfolks, all intent on moving toward a station where each may best view the fray. And now, now the marshal of the tourney raises his trumpet to clear the field and summon the knights to combat. And there rides King Angus of Ireland, and the knight of a hundred men, and many fall and many are victorious. And now the grand assault begins, and across the tourney field, King Pallas and Elaine sit. Father, I cannot find Sir Malfay. Where can he be? He and thy brother Levain watch there from the hill to see which way the battle goes. Behold, they now approach to join the losing side. Look, look, he's in the battle now, challenging the world. Oh, gallant knight. And Levain, my son, fights beside him as though inspired. On, brave knights. Father, they do all bear on him at once. They burst his armor. Stranger must be wounded unto death, yet he drives ahead with sword and spear, and the knights of the table round are falling back. The champions of King Arthur being driven back to the barrier. The knights of the table round have lost the tournament! Hermit, art thou here? Yea, my son. Thou art secure in the chapel of the forest. It were better had I never left this chapel, father. Peace unto thee, Sir Lancelot. The bird of time has flown and brought thee here again. That is enough. I have failed, Hermit. Nay. Sir Lavaine told me how you defeated the knights of the table round in honorable battle. Thou hast cleared thy name, Lancelot. Now all know who truly was the stranger knight who rode to Camelot in the court of King Pelles. It, it was not that for myself. I no longer care. But the grail. My time has come and I've seen it not. And ere I go, I, I would speak to one sweet maid under my true name and station. Lancelot. Thank the good God who has brought her hence. Oh, my dear. My dear. I thought they wounded unto death. Lavaine told me. Oh, Lily Maid. Now that thou knowest my true name, dost thou hate me? Hate thee, Sir Lancelot. Oh, no. No. I, I have wronged thee from the first. Nay. Nay. I will hold thee here, my love. Elaine, within my heart, all reverence and honor for thee. And as I search deeper, me seems I find a love for thee beyond all else. Lancelot? Lancelot? Elaine, the fair. Elaine, the Lily Maid. <gasps> what is that light? I see no light. Lancelot, bide thou with me. A blinding light approaches. So white, so luminous. It, it takes a form. It is the grail. I know it is the holy grail.
This is Jean Ruth again. You know, we're all affected by the surroundings around us, by what we see and hear, by the example of others. And that's especially true in a home. If there's always a kind and encouraging word, we can't help but think bright and cheerful thoughts. And you know something? Those who are close to God are best able to be happy and cheerful. When you know that God is ready to, and able to help you, you can be confident about the future. Because you know your faith and trust in Him will always bring His help. That's why when a family joins together in daily family prayer, they can be sure of happiness in their home. Pray together as a family every day, for prayer brings peace. A prayerful home is a peaceful home. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Dan O'Herlihy and Virginia Gregg in Sir Lancelot of the Lake with Jean Ruth as your hostess. Featured in our cast were Bob Sweeney, Raymond Burr, Lorreen Tuttle, Hi Aberback, Ben Wright, Lee Patrick, and Tudor Owen. The story of Sir Lancelot was adapted by Virginia Cook, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Dolbay. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home. And inviting you to join us next week at this time when family theater will present Joan Leslie and Keith Frizzell in Washington Irving's The Spectre Bridegroom. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.